Testing one, two. All right. I want to thank the choir for those two fine selections. <laughs> and now we'll have the reading of the law. We'll start with Exodus 20. Exodus 20, and we picked up from one, verse 1 to 17. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay. Now we're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, I'm going to read from verse 13 to 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. 13 to 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So that, we just read the commandments, so that is the conclusion of the whole matter. So now let's go to Revelation 22, and see what awaits for people who do not adhere to these commandments. Last book, Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to pick this up at verse 14. Go ahead once you get there. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Okay. On that note, I just want to say happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. And we know who we are. And today's lesson is simply called Unleavened Bread. So this lesson is to clear up any misunderstanding are to make things a little bit clearer about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So, without further ado, we're going to start out this lesson in Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23. Okay, are your page still turning? Okay, is it there? All right, go ahead. We're going to take our time and walk this thing down. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. 23 and 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. 
speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them concerning the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. Our feasts. My feasts. The Jews' feasts. The Lord's feasts. Okay, so the Lord is making it plain. He's given Moses a directive to tell the people. Okay? So we're going to see, even verse 3 going to tell us that the, about the week, Lord's weekly Sabbath and how you're supposed to handle that. Go ahead. Six days shall work mm -hmm. be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So the Lord is telling you how to handle this Sabbath day. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord. So he, these are the feasts of the Lord. He's going to tell mm -hmm. you how to handle his feasts now. So remember we just read no servile work. You ain't supposed to do no kind of work at all. Not work in your house. Go ahead. Even holy convocations, mm -hmm. which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. So you shall proclaim these feasts in their seasons. Mm hmm not out of their season, but in their season. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. The 14th day of the first month, which is a bib, is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Right. So the Passover comes first, then after that is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's right. So, the Lord got to pass over your sin first before you become unleavened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. So, seven days you must eat unleavened bread. This is not a seven-day feast. Go ahead. In the first day ye shall mm -hmm. have an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no sovi work therein. Right. So you, 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 for the feast, you don't, you don't go to your job. You don't go earn a paycheck. Except you do the work that pertaining to the feast. The first day you're going to have a holy convocation, like we did. Mm -hmm. And the seventh day. That's right. So those are the two days that the Lord tell us to come together. Now, let's go to Exodus 12. Skip over to Exodus 12, and we're going to pick this up at verse 15. Exodus 12 and verse 15. Exodus 12 and verse 15. Okay, you know what, uh, give me 14 for good measure. Okay. Yeah, you know what, uh, give me 13. All right. I want to make a point. Go ahead. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Mm -hmm. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So when you come underneath the Lord's blood, which is your baptism, he will also pass over you. Go mm -hmm. ahead. I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And ahead. this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Right. So during the time of animal sacrifice, yes, before Jesus died, they kept it as a feast. Okay? So after Jesus died, we keep it as a memorial. And we're going to see that when we get to the new book. Go ahead. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. We shall keep it for a feast, you know, by an ordinance forever. Forever is a very long time. That's right, but mighty long. Forever is when Jesus put an end to it. See, we're not keeping the feast anymore. All we do is keeping the memorial because now Jesus has become the Passover. 
And we're going to see that in the new book. Go ahead. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Go ahead. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. So the first day you shall put away all the leaven out of your houses. That plain and simple. So what is the subject matter? Unleavened bread. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened mm-hmm. bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. So that soul shall be cut off from the church because you have broken the Lord's law. Okay, go ahead. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. Mm-hmm. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. So the first day you have an holy convocation, the seventh day you have an holy convocation. Go ahead. No manner of work shall be done in them, save mm-hmm. that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Right, so every, the work is pertaining to the feast. Because if you don't work, are you going to prepare the feast? Mm-hmm. No servile work. Don't go to your job for a paycheck. So that's why we try to give you a calendar so you can recognize when is the feast and you can ask for that time off if possible. Go ahead. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Mm-hmm. For in the self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. Right. So you shall observe it forever. So at this time, let me uh, call for the, for the calendar. Please open the curtain. So, this Passover and this feast land the exact day when Jesus had the Passover and when he died on the cross. So, let's see. I'm going to touch it and let's see if you, you, you can see it. Okay, so... Okay, so Tuesday night, first let me explain this to you. Uh, the, the numbers in the blue represent the Hebrew calendar. And the one, the color on top, that represents the Gregorian calendar. Okay, let's see some. I won't bring this back up. All right. So choose a night. The Lord, which is the 14th day, he had the Passover. And remember, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and that's when they came and got him. And he went through Pilate's hall and, you know, went through all that trial. In the daytime of the Passover... They crucified him. So now, they remove him from the cross before sundown on the first night of unleavened bread. So that is the 15th. So you can see that there's two separate days, right? So now, he was in the grave for three days and Three nights. So he was in the grave for Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Uh, Thursday in the daytime, Friday in the daytime, and Saturday in the daytime. And he raised right before sundown on Saturday. All right, so now. Go ahead and read verse 18. 
in the first month, mm -hmm. on the fourteenth day of the month at even, mm -hmm. ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. So until the one and twentieth day. So on the fifteenth, we're going to eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. On the sixteenth, we're going to eat unleavened bread. The seventeenth, we're going to eat unleavened bread. The eighteenth, we're going to eat unleavened bread. The 19th, we're going to eat unleavened bread. The 20th, we're going to eat unleavened bread until the 21st. At daytime, at night, unleavened bread is over. So we're going to count from that one and 21st day. So bring that up. Okay. Right. Okay, so go ahead, read that part again from until 1 and 20. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at even. Right. So, as you can see, on the 14th, that's one day. That's the first time for the year we're going to eat unleavened bread. Why? Because that's a Passover. You cannot eat no other bread unless it's unleavened bread for the Passover. The second day, which is the 15th, begin the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So that's why I said, get for the first day, make sure you get all the leaven out of your house. So you're going to eat unleavened bread from the 2nd to the 8th. That's seven days. But if you include the Passover, that's eight days. Mm -hmm. So that, is that clear? That makes sense? So that's why we go, when you read it, it says you're going to eat unleavened bread for eight days. But it's really seven days that you are commanded to eat it. It's just that the Passover, you must eat unleavened bread. That's the first time for the year you're going to eat unleavened bread. That clear? Okay. So there should be no misunderstanding. And if you, if you want to, you can come up here and later on, you know, read the, those side notes if you need a copy. All right, thank you, Brother Donnell. All right, so now we're going to read uh, verse 19, and it's going to spell that out. Thank you, Brother Alex. Okay, go ahead. Seven days shall mm -hmm. there be no leaven found in your houses. Right, you shouldn't have no leaven in your houses. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, mm -hmm. whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Right. So whether you be a stranger or born in the land, there is no exception. The Lord is not a respecter of person. You're going to get the same punishment as Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, mm -hmm. and all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. That is plain. Go ahead. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of, your, out of the door of your house until the morning. Right, so if none of you shall go out of your house, how can Israel leave the same night? Because if they venture outside their door, they're going to get killed. Mm -hmm. And it is clearly telling them that they're supposed to stay inside their house. So we want to show you that they did not leave the same night. And it's going to spell it out because the book is clear. Go ahead. 
for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to, dism- to smite you. That's right. So as long as you obey, the Lord will take care of you. And that's what the Lord keep pushing, obedience. It's better than sacrifice. Go ahead. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. So you're supposed to teach your children so they can do the same thing, observe it forever. Now, drop down to verse 29 and go ahead. And it came to pass Mm -hmm. that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that is in the dungeon, and of all the firstborn of cattle. Right, so this is the Passover night. So when fear of them wake up, they're going to see nothing but dead bodies. And Israel was in lockdown at that time. Now jump to verse 33 and go ahead. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people. You know, I start at verse 31. We're going to show you that the, where the, the Exodus begins. Go ahead. And he called for Moses and mm-hmm. Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go. Serve the Lord as ye have said. Right. So this night that he called Moses, that was a feast of unleavened bread. It's not the same night as the Passover. Because remember, they ain't supposed to come out. So they, was, they were locked down. And it's, the book's going to make it plain to you. Go ahead. Also go, take your mm-hmm. flocks and mm-hmm. your herds, as ye have said, and be gone. And bless, bless me, me also. also. He said, be gone. Bless me also. Don't leave without Give me some blessing. Go ahead. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people mm-hmm. that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. Right. So they'll be all dead men. So now the Lord put some fear into them. Verse 34. Go ahead. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. The people took their dough before it's was 11. Don't mean that there was no peace in there. They took it before it rise. They took it so in order for your dough to rise, you got to give it some time. You can't, you can't mess with it. Once you put on that dough, you can't move it, you can't shake it. Else you're going to end up with a flat bread. <laughs> so on that note, let's read what leaven means. We're going to come right back to that. But we want to break down the definition of leaven. What does leaven mean? Go ahead, bro. Leaven. Mm-hmm. Substance used to make dough rise. Right. The substance used to make dough rise. So it's got to be introduced into the dough, and it's got to sit there for a period of time. There got to be some chemical changes take place Mm -hmm. to make it rise. Go ahead. And the people took their dough before it was leavened. So they, they took their dough before it was leavened. Go ahead. Their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. Right. So it's not saying that there wasn't and 11 in there, because remember, this is the first time Israel being introduced to unleavened bread. Before that, you can't read that. Nowhere. So this is all new to them. Just like when you came into the word, it's all new to you. Finish verse 34. Yeah, that was the end of 34. That's the end of 34. Okay. Give them one more, 35. So we want to show you also that during the daytime, Israel was spoiling the Egyptians. While they were mourning for them dead, they were spoiling them. Go ahead, one more. And the children of Israel did Mm -hmm. according to the word of Moses. Mm -hmm. And they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. Right. So they did not leave poor. 
So that's why they could not have left on the night of the Passover, even of the day of the Passover, because they were busy spoiling the Egyptians. And by sundown, the night of unleavened bread, Pharaoh get, got fed up with, uh-uh, you got to go. When he saw the amount of dead bodies. So he was urgent for them to, to leave. Okay, so now let's go to Numbers 33, and we're going to pick this up at verse 1. Numbers 33 and verse 1. Numbers 33 and verse 1. Numbers 33 and verse 1. Now we're going to look at the route that Israel took leaving out of Egypt on the 15th day. Go ahead. These are the journeys of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their armies under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out according to their journeys by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramesses in the first month, on the 15th day of the first month, on the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. So it basically said the morrow, the day after the Passover, they went out with a high hand. Ramsey, that's Egypt. So they leave on that Passover night. I mean, not Passover night, and 11 bread night, which is the 15th. So now, let's go to Exodus 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Exodus 13, and we're going to pick this up at verse 3. Go ahead. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall be no leavened bread, there shall no leavened bread be eaten. This okay. day came ye out in the month Abib. So they came out in the month Abib. I want you to keep that in mind. That's when we're supposed to have the Passover and have the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring mm -hmm. thee into the land of the Canaanites, mm -hmm. and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. So you shall keep the service in the month that the Lord specified. That's right. No other month. I want you to keep that in mind. There is no other month the Lord given for you to do that. Go ahead. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And in the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. So he keep telling you that. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. Remember, we read that you eat unleavened bread for eight days? Mm -hmm. That's because one of those days is the Passover. Go ahead. And there shall no leaven be seen with thee. There shall be no, no leaven seen with thee. There shall be no leaven on your person. Go ahead. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Neither shall there be leaven seen with you in your quarters. Now, some people take issue with this by saying that you're supposed to throw out all your yeast, all your baking powder. So now, I just want to point out something to you to let you look at what's the subject matter. It's unleavened bread, right? That's right. So the yeast has to go into the bread. So if the yeast not going into the bread, 
then the bread cannot become unleavened. So the subject matter that we are talking about is unleavened bread. It's not just simple leavening. We're talking about unleavened bread. So some people think that you're supposed to throw out all that product, but no. The, the, the book is simply telling you about unleavened bread. That's what it's, it, it's saying. Okay, go ahead, verse 8. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, mm -hmm. This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. Okay, so you got to pass this on to your generation. Verse 9. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand. So it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thy hand. And what else? Go ahead. And for a memorial between thine eyes. So what is between your eyes? Is it your brain, right? So he wants you to keep this in your mind. Don't lose it. Go ahead. That the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. Right. So it's going to get in your mouth. It's got to come through your brain first. So that's where the Lord is putting his law, in your brain. Go ahead. For with a strong hand hath the Lord mm -hmm. brought thee out of Egypt. Okay. Verse 10, go ahead. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. Right, so you must keep it in its season. And nowhere else. So I want to ask you a question. What qualifies you to take the second Passover? Which month do you take the second Passover, the second Passover in? We're going to look at that. Let's go to Numbers 9 and verse 9. So what qualifies you to take the path? The second pass over. And what months are you supposed to take the second pass over in? We're going to look at that. Numbers not cha chapter 9. And we're going to pick this up at verse 9. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, mm -hmm. saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, mm -hmm. or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Okay, so this qualified you to take the second Passover if you meet these requirements. It is straight. Go ahead. The 14th. Let's see what month you got to take it in. Go ahead. The 14th day of the second month. At even, they shall keep it. So the 14th day at the second month, you shall keep the second Passover. And what shall you keep it with? Go ahead. And eat it with unleavened bread and bitters, bitter herbs. Okay, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So the reason why I take you there is because we have some members that keep asking me, whether or not we're supposed to feast for unleavened bread for seven days. So I'm going to show you where they get this from. And, and I'm going to show you why. So let's go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. And we're going to pick this up at chapter 29. Second Chronicles chapter 29. So, you know, sometimes there is a valid reason why things are done, done a certain way. It is an exception, not the norm. And I'm going to show you why the Lord I even accept it. Okay, so you're there? 
All right, so. Ahaza, king of Judah, this was a evil king, and he was worshiping Baal. So Israel wasn't really doing the things that they're supposed to do, keep, like keeping the Lord's feast. So here comes Ezekiah, the son of Haza, who wants to do right by the Lord. So now we're going to pick this up at verse 1. Go ahead. Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, mm -hmm. and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and his mother's name was Abiah, the daughter of Zechariah. Go he, ahead. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Go ahead. According to all that David his father had done, mm -hmm. he in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Right. So the, the house of the Lord was shut up because ain't nobody was keeping even the Sabbath day. They were worshiping something else until Ezekiah came along. So now, let's skip over to chapter 30. And we're going to pick this up at the one. Go ahead. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah. Right. So I want you to keep in mind why we are looking at the second Passover and the month that the second Passover is kept. Go ahead. And wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh mm -hmm. that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem mm -hmm. to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. Okay. So remember, this is, Ezekiah is trying to bring back Israel in harmony with the Lord. Keep that in mind. Go ahead. For the king had taken counsel mm -hmm. and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. So they're going to keep the Passover in the second month. And remember what we said qualified you to keep the Passover in the second month? You got to be unclean by reason of the day. They are coming from a far journey. Go ahead. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. Neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. Okay, so they could not keep it because they weren't ready. They weren't ready spiritually and they weren't ready physically. Go ahead. And what did... It Ezekiah and the prince established. Go ahead. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. Mm -hmm. so, they de so they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it is written. Right. So they did not follow his rule. Basically, that's what that was saying, as it is written. But who is establishing this? The king and his prince to do this. Because they have not done it in a long time. So let's drop down to verse 13 and go ahead. And there assembled at Jerusalem mm -hmm. much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. Go ahead. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away, and cast them in the brook Kidron. Right, so they removed all these idol-worshipping instruments that they were using to make way to serve the true and living God. Go ahead. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. Right, so they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. So these brothers, the king and the prince, you know, they have a zeal that they want to truly worship the Lord and keep his Passover and his feast and leavened bread. Go ahead. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed mm -hmm. and sanctified themselves and mm -hmm. brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. 
Uh huh. Go ahead. And they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. Huh? Go ahead. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of killing of the Passovers for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. Right. So they got to get it right. Okay. Go ahead. For a multitude of the people, mm -hmm. even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves. Yet did they eat the Passover. Over, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. Right. And so this is the prayer that Brother Bowie always pray at the feast for the people that are unclean. Go ahead. But Hezekiah prayed mm -hmm. for them, saying, The good Lord pardon every one that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah, and healed the people. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with great gladness. Okay, and, go ahead. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they did eat throughout the, the feast seven days offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God, their fathers. So they keep the feast for seven days. Mm -hmm. So that's where this scum came from. So this is an exception. It's not the norm. So they were doing this to get back in harmony with the Lord. So this is not something that you practice. We are learning from their mistake. Don't mean you're supposed to repeat it. Go ahead. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days. They even, they, they got so driven that they keep, they even keep the feast other seven days. Go ahead. And they kept other seven days with gladness. Okay. So now you see where that came from. And that's not the reason why we're supposed to have a feast for seven days during unleavened bread. They were trying to correct, the king was trying to correct an error that his father made. So now let's go back and look at Exodus 13 and look at what the Lord said, the right way you're supposed to have it. So now we see the wrong way. Like I said, which is an exception, because the Lord accept it. The Lord accept what they did, because the Lord knew their heart. Their heart was right. They were trying to make things right. But that is the exception. This is the norm. We're going to look at the norm. So we look at the exception, and we're going to look at the norm, the way things are supposed to be done. We're just going to look at verse 6 and 7. Go ahead. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Not seven days you shall have a feast. Go ahead. And in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. And there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. Okay, so you see the right way to do it. So now let's go to... That's the law. That's the established way that the Lord wants us to do it. So now, let's go to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, and we're going to pick this up at verse 16. Romans chapter 6 and 16. Romans 6 and 16. Go ahead. Know ye not mm -hmm. that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Right. So people that are leaven live a sinful life. And Satan is their master. 
That's just straight up to the point and simple. Now, let's look at the wages of sin, which is the wages, if you become leaven, what's going to happen to you? Go ahead. We're going we're gonna to pick this up at verse 23. Verse 23. Go ahead. For the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, so that's pretty much straight. So now, let's go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to look at the spiritual side of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to pick this about verse 6. We're looking at the spiritual part of what leaven and unleavened means. So it's really ain't got to do with bread. The Lord is speaking in metaphors to give us, you know, great understanding of the physical things that he show us so we can understand the spiritual things. So he makes the correlation with, and le with leaven equals sin, and unleaven means righteousness. Go ahead. Your glorying, is, your mm -hmm. glorying is not good. Right. So uh, leavening make you puffed up like it made a bread puffed up. Go ahead. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? A little leaven leavened the whole lump. Uh, go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Right. You got to purge out therefore the old leaven. You got to get rid of the old leaven. If you don't get rid of the old leaven, we're going to show you what's going to happen to you. Go ahead. That ye may be a new lump, mm -hmm. as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Right. Christ became our Passover. That's why we don't kill the lamb anymore. We come underneath his blood during his baptism. Okay, so now let me show you. Just skip over. We're still in 1 Corinthians. We're just going to skip over to chapter 3. And we're going to show you what's going to happen to people if they refuse to remove the old leaven out of their minds and body. So now, chapter 3, and we're going to pick this up at verse 16. Go ahead. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Right, so you are the temple of God. Go ahead. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Spirit of God dwelleth in you. What's that? The word of God. Because you're going to be teaching somebody else what does say the Lord. Go ahead. If any man defile the temple of God, mm -hmm. him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Right. So you are holy, which temple you are. So now let's look at some example of... Some eloquent preachers, which they'll be preaching tomorrow, that Jesus warned us about with leavening doctrine. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 11, and we're going to pick this up at verse 37. Luke chapter 11, and we're going to pick this up at verse 37. Luke 11 and 37. When you get there, go ahead. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. Mm -hmm. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Right. So they used to go through these ritual of washing. This elaborate washing and, you know, before they eat which that's part of hygiene. That's where that comes from. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto him, mm -hmm. Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness? Mm. 
ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? Right. Are you going to separate the inside from the outside? Ain't it, isn't it part of the entire body? So Jesus is making it plain to them. Go ahead. But rather, give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. Mm -hmm. But woe unto you, Pharisees, for ye tithe mint and rue and all manner of herb, and pass over judgment and the love of God. These ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Right. Don't just be a selective uh, hearer and doer of the word. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Woe unto you, Pharisee, mm -hmm. for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues mm -hmm. and greetings in the markets. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are, great, for ye are as graves which appear not, and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. Then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. Right, so he's giving Jesus style, oh, master, with his hypocrite self. Go ahead. And he said, woe unto you also, ye lawyers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, didn't, you, you think he was going to get away, right? I'm going to lay it on you. Go ahead. For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, mm -hmm. and ye yourselves touch not the burden with one of your fingers. Not even with your little finger. Go ahead. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your father, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchres. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. Right. So from the foundation of the earth, the Lord is... Going to bring forth judgment when he returned. Go ahead. From the blood of Abel mm -hmm. unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple, verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Okay. Verse 52. Go ahead. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them which were entering ye hindered. Right. You tripped them up. When they try to correct you. Skip right over to chapter 12 and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. In the meantime, mm -hmm. when they were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Right. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Those were the, the pastors of those days. So, ain't no different today, tomorrow, the church is back. And what they're going to preach? Nothing but leavening. So, the Lord is warning you about their doctrine that they're going to be preaching because it is dangerous. So now let's go to Mark chapter 11 and pick it up at verse 27. Mark 11 and 27. We're going to see what that say. So Jesus is contending. Jesus, the only one of Israel who is unleavened, he's going to contend with the chief priests, the scribe, the Pharisees, and the elders, all these so-called preachers with leaven in, in their doctrine. He, he, he's going to straighten them out. So now we say 11 and 27, Mark 11 and 27. Go ahead. And when they come again to mm -hmm. Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests, and the scribes, and the elders, and said unto him, By what authority dost thou these things? So they have the nerve asking Jesus, By what authority are you doing these things, man? And what? Go ahead. 
And who gave thee this authority to do these things? Wow. And what Jesus is going to tell them? Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask of you one question and answer me. And right. I would answer me. Don't, don't, don't dance around me. Answer me. He's demanding them to answer him. Go ahead. And I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Mm -hmm. The baptism of John. Was it from heaven or of men? Okay, Answer let's me. See what they're going to say. Go ahead. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did ye not believe? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people. For all men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. Right. So if they say that John baptism is from men, then they would accuse John of preaching the doctrine of men. But John wasn't preaching the doctrine of men. He was preaching the doctrine of the Lord. And he was showing them the coming of the kingdom. So, they dare not cross that line. Go ahead. And they answered and said unto Jesus, mm -hmm. We cannot tell. And Jesus answering said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. So Jesus just shut them down. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. And we're going to pick this up at verse 1. Matthew 16 and 1. 16, Matthew 16 and 1. Go ahead. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came. And tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Right. A wicked and adulterous generation seek after a sign. Because they said, if you can't speak it in tongues, then you ain't got the spirit of God in you. You got to be doing something. You got to be kicking and gyrating and flipping and dropping on the stage and rolling. Ooh, I'm full of the spirit. But all these are signs to entertain men. <laughs> Go ahead. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Right. It's the sign of the prophet Jonas that say, I'm going to be in the, the heart of the grave for three days and three nights. Go ahead. And he left them and departed. Mm -hmm. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. They had forgotten to take bread. But what Jesus is going to say to them, what he's going to remind them about, because their mind is on something else. That's physical. Go ahead. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And so they, he's telling them to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's telling them to beware of the bad doctrine. The leavening is that bad doctrine that they preach to you and use to deceive you. Just like they're going to preach it tomorrow. Go ahead. And they reasoned among themselves, mm -hmm. saying, It is because we have taken no bread. Mm -hmm. Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, mm -hmm. why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye, mm -hmm. not under, do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? Right. So, hey, if you all wanted bread, I can take, take even one of them stone and turn it into bread. Because it, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about the bread that's going to give you everlasting life. Go ahead. Neither the seven loaves of mm -hmm. the 4,000 and how many baskets you took up. Mm -hmm. How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, Mm -hmm. but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Right. So the Lord is talking about doctrine here. 
these bad doctrine that, can, that will lead you to the lake of fire. So now, let's go to Matthew 23. So Jesus had enough of these Pharisees, and he's going to just let them have it. So we go to Matthew chapter 23, and we're going to pick this up at verse 13. 23 and 13. Okay, verse 13, go ahead. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Yeah, woe unto you. Go ahead. Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither ye suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Right, so if your righteousness is like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you're going to receive the same judgment that they get. Go ahead. Woe unto you, mm -hmm. scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, mm -hmm. for you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Right. You make him worse. You make him worse than what he was before. He might have, have, have a chance, but once you get done with him with your doctrine, whoo. That poor fellow ain't got a chance. Let's drop to verse 23 and go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes mm -hmm. and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin mm -hmm. and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. And what is the weighty matter of the law? Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. So you see what the Lord is talking about. One more, go ahead. Ye blind guides would strain at mm -hmm. a net and swallow a camel. Mm, mm, mm. Drop down to verse 27. Go ahead. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto the whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, mm -hmm. but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanliness. Right, you murder these people spiritually. Go ahead. Even so, ye are outwardly appear righteous unto men, mm -hmm. but within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Jesus just let them have it. Let's go to Second Peter, the second chapter. And let's look at these false preacher and false teacher with their leaven doctrine. Second Peter, the second chapter. Second Peter, the second chapter. And we're going to pick this up at the verse one. Go ahead. But there were false prophets mm -hmm. also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Right. There's false teachers among us even today. And tomorrow you're going to see them. Go ahead. Who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, mm -hmm. even denying the Lord that bought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. So they're going to commit suicide with their doctrine. Go ahead. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, mm -hmm. by reason of whom the way, the way of truth shall be even evil spoken of. So they're going to sp spoke about the truth in an evil way. They're going to try to twist it, make it look like fiction. Go ahead. And through covenant shall they, mm -hmm. with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now is of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Right. So it ain't going to slumber because they're going to get it. They're going to get exactly what they're working for. So now, let's go to Titus. Titus chapter 1, Titus 1, Titus 
and we're going to pick this up at verse 10. 1 and 10. Go ahead. For there are many unruly mm -hmm. and vain talkers and deceivers, mm -hmm. especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Right, for money. Go ahead. One of themselves, <clears throat> even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Mm -hmm. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. Right. So everything about them is defiled. Go ahead. They profess that they know God, mm -hmm. but in works they deny him. Right. They just pretty much beat up their gums, talking about Lord, 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 but they don't do nothing he say for them to do. Go ahead. Being abominable mm -hmm. and disobedient and unto every good work, reprobate. Right. So let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. The third chapter, 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. And we're going to pick this up at verse 12. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, and verse 12. Go ahead. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Right, so they're going to, try, they're going to deceive people, but they themselves are going to be deceived also. Ain't that what you see going on today? Mm -hmm. You got a lot of deceivers. They come trying to sell you a bag of goods. And in that bag, it's empty. It's nothing but trap. Take your money and run. Go ahead. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Mm -hmm. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Right. So Paul is telling Timothy to stand in the holy scriptures that you have heard from your child mm -hmm. that you are able to be unleavened. You got to stand up in this Holy Scripture and believe in it and keep it and do it. Go ahead. All Scripture mm -hmm. is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, mm -hmm. for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Right. So you'll be thoroughly furnished. And to all good works, when you stand up into the Holy Scriptures, say nothing can move you. And nothing can change your mind. So let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. And we're going to pick this up at verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 8. So, Paul is giving us a warning. Go ahead. Beware, mm -hmm. lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Right. Don't let them spoil it through vain philosophy. Don't let them come with all these lost books and all these books and try to confuse your mind. Be grounded first in the word. Be grounded first in the Holy Scriptures. Be grounded first in the Bible. And once you're grounded first in the Bible, ain't no one can move you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. After the traditions of men, mm -hmm. after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Right. Plain and simple. 
So the word of God is sufficient. And we do not need no other doctrine. If this is the only book that you use, you will be fine. You don't need no other book. This will keep you straight. This will give you that eternal life. So now, let's go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Because Paul obeyed the Lord. He kept the feast of unleavened bread in a strange land. They said, oh, we can't, we, we can't serve God in a strange land. But Paul showed you, you can serve the Lord in any land, anywhere you are. You don't need to be in Israel to serve the Lord or to keep the high days. Paul is going to show you that. Acts chapter 20, and we're going to pick this up at verse 6. Hit verse 5 first. Go ahead. Give us some context. These are the goings before tarried for, these going before tarried for us at Troas. Right. So they were tarrying at Troas. Go ahead. And we sailed away from Philippi mm -hmm. after the days of unleavened bread. So they were in Philippi on the days of unleavened bread. So they kept it in a season. Remember we read where Ezekiah had to keep it out of its season. Mm -hmm. And that's an exception. It's not the norm. Go ahead. And came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. Mm -hmm. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Okay. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. And we sailed thence mm -hmm. and came the next day over Chios. Mm -hmm. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried in Trigolium. And the next day we were at Miletus. Mm -hmm. And Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia. Mm -hmm. for he Why? Why he would not spend the time in Asia? Go ahead. For he hasted, mm -hmm. if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So it is important that he made the day of Pentecost. That's right. It is important that he make the high day. So he's putting every effort to do that. Because we're going to see the Lord tell us three times a year, that you're supposed to show up with your family. We're going to read that too. And Paul is simply obeying what the Lord said. So now let's skip to verse 28. And go ahead. Take heed therefore unto yourselves mm -hmm. and to all the flock over mm -hmm. the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to mm -hmm. feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So that's a warning to me. That I must take heed. Now let's go to. Matthew chapter 26. We're going to look at this. Jesus keeping the pass over. Matthew 26. And we're going to hit verse 1. Matthew 26 and 1. Matthew 26 and 1. When you get there, go ahead. And it came to pass, mm -hmm. when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Know ye that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Right, so he's letting them know this has to happen because the prophet said so. Drop down to verse 17 and go ahead. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Right. So even though it's talking about the, the first 
talking about a feast of unleavened bread, the second sentence is clearing it up, let you know that it is the Passover, because Jesus did not eat the feast of unleavened bread. He died on the feast on the, on the Passover. So if he died on the Passover, he couldn't eat the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. So you see how you can discern what the book is saying? Go ahead. And he said, go into the city to such a man mm -hmm. and say unto him, the master saith, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. So that clear things up right there. Right. Because Jesus could not eat at the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Because he supposed to be our Passover. Go ahead. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them. And they made ready the Passover. So they made ready the Passover. So, so easy that clear, clear things up. So now let's go to John chapter 19. John 19, John 19, <clears throat> John 19, we go pick it up at verse 1, go ahead, 19 and 1, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited on crowns of thorn and put it on his head, and they put on him a purple robe. And right. So remember now, this is the daytime of the Passover. That is what taking place with Jesus. Because he ate the Passover that Tuesday night. He didn't eat, eat he didn't kill the Passover like he normally did. He break out the bread and the wine. And that's what we do every Passover, to keep that memorial going, like he said. So we read verse 1. So now let's drop down to verse 11. And go ahead. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, right, you can't have no power unless it's been given to you from above. Because that's where it comes from. Go ahead. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Right. So he that delivered Jesus unto Pilate have the greater sin, which is leaven. He got the greater sin. Okay. Drop down to verse 17 and go ahead. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew, Golgotha. Right. So he is bearing his cross. Now, this cross is the instrument of brutality. So now, why do you want to walk around with instrument of brutality showing it off to everybody else? You don't walk around with a, the bullet that kill your own child no. around your neck, right? No. So why are you showing off the instrument of brutality that Jesus was tortured and suffered on and saying that you're holy and God is with you? Go ahead. Where they crucified him mm -hmm. and two others with him on either side, one and Jesus in the midst. Right, so Jesus was in the middle of these two thieves. So it shows you that Jesus wasn't the only one that died on the cross. And if you go to uh, Daniel chapter 9 and 27, it shows you that Jesus died also in the midst of the week. In the middle of the week he died. Not on Good Friday, ain't no such thing. Because you can't get three days and three nights from Friday. And I don't know for the life of me why people keep following these traditions and holding so dearly unto them, and it is so wrong. I mean, we have no excuse now that we can read 
and write. And it's the same English that it's written into. Go ahead. That was the end of 18. That was the end of 18. Okay. Let's drop down to verse 28. After this, mm -hmm. Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, mm -hmm. that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. So he had to say this word to fulfill the scripture. I thirst. You can see that in Psalm 69, verse 21. Go ahead. Now there was set a vessel full of mm -hmm. vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. Right. So he was... Hinting them, said, okay, this is the time now you're supposed to bring me the vinegar and put it in my mouth. So that's why he said, I thirst, because he would not receive the vinegar before then. Else the scripture wouldn't be fulfilled. So at this point in time, he accepted the vinegar. Go ahead. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Right. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Ain't no ghost just leave out of Jesus and just float off and say, bye, y'all. He just simply gave up the breath. Because that's the only spiritual thing that didn't come from the ground. That's inside of a man. And Jesus didn't die and just float off the glory like these preachers telling you. Go ahead. The Jews, therefore... Mm -hmm. Because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day. So He's what made that Sabbath day a, a high day different from the rest of the Sabbath day? So what they didn't understand, that high day was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So that's where they mess up at, not recognizing that And leavened bread comes right after Passover. Go ahead. Besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Okay. But the scripture said they didn't break a bone in his body. So we know they didn't break his bone. So now let's, let's go to Ezekiel. 45. So now we're going to see if when Jesus returned, if you're going to still have to keep these eye days. Let's see if you, you still, got, still have to keep these eye days when Jesus returned. We're looking into the future now. This is when Jesus returned. We're looking into the future. Ezekiel 45 and verse 21. 45 and 21. Go ahead. In the first month, mm -hmm. in the 14th day of the month, ye shall have the Passover. A feast of seven days, a leavened bread shall be eaten. Mm -hmm. So, we still have to keep the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread. That's right. We will not escape from that. So now, Let's go back to Exodus chapter 23, and we'll look at the law concerning the appointed feast. Exodus 23, and we, we have only two places left. Exodus 23. Exodus 23, and we're going to pick this up at verse 14, Exodus 23 and verse 14. Go ahead. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Okay, three times you're supposed to keep a feast unto the Lord. In the year. Okay. What are these feasts? Go ahead. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the one we just finished. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is the law. Go ahead. 
Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib. Right. You're supposed to eat the unleavened bread for seven days, as the Lord commanded us to do. In the month of Abib. Go ahead. For in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. Right. Just don't come with your empty belly and your empty hand. You got to bring something to the feast. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors. Which the thou feast of harvest, mm -hmm. the first fruit of thy labors. Go ahead. Which thou hast sown in the field. Mm -hmm. And the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord the God, the Lord God. Right, three times a year. So we're gonna appear unleavened bread, the feast of weeks, which is Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The Feast of Tabernacle, which is in gathering. So those are the three major times that the Lord is requiring us to appear. We must appear. That is the law. So now we're going to go look at another scriptures. Uh, Deuteronomy. 14, because, you know, some people tell you that eating and drinking is a sin. I mean, yeah, drinking and having a good time is a sin. So now we're going to see what the Lord say about drinking at his feast. Let's see. Deuteronomy 14, and we're going to pick this up at verse 23. Go ahead. You want 16? I mean, not sorry, not Deuteronomy 14, sorry. I'm looking at it and telling you the wrong thing. Deuteronomy 14, and we're going to pick this up at verse 16? You want 16 or 14? Oh, no, no, Deuteronomy 14. Okay. And we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Gotcha. My bad. Uh, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm messing up. Yeah, Deuteronomy 16, you're right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 16. I'm going to pick it up at verse, verse uh, 2. Yeah. I'm going a little bit ahead of myself. Yeah. All right. I wait for the last two scriptures to mess up. <laughs> All right. All right. Go. Go ahead, verse 2. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice mm -hmm. the Passover unto the Lord thy God, of the flock and the herd, mm -hmm. in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Right, so where the Lord choose to place his name, that's where you're supposed to come and worship and keep the feast. Go ahead. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. Right, so the Lord keep telling us seven days we're supposed to eat unleavened bread. Seven days. Now let's drop down to verse 8. Go ahead. Six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Right. No servile work. Let's drop down to verse 16. Go ahead. Three times in a year shall mm -hmm. all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And in the feast of weeks. Mm -hmm. And in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Right. So don't come with your empty stomach and your bare hands. You got to bring something to the Lord feast. And what, what he said? 
Go ahead. Every man shall give as he is able, mm -hmm. according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Right. So you give according to how the Lord bless you. Don't go bankrupt trying to give everything. So give what you can afford. Okay, now let's go to Deuteronomy 14. Now. <laughs> Last place, Deuteronomy 14. Skip over to 14. And we're going to pick this up at verse 23. So now we are looking at the place that the Lord chose to put his name. Go ahead. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God mm -hmm. in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. Mm -hmm. The tithe of thy corn, and or of thy wine, mm -hmm. and thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herd, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Right. So all these high days are, is the plan of the Lord. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee, mm -hmm. so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far for thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go into the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow thy, thy, that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. Right. So the Lord wants you to relax, kick back, and enjoy his feast. You know, that's a time for just release. The Lord knows that we got to release. If, if we don't release, we'll just go crazy. So... That's the lesson, and I hope someone is edified and got a, a little better understanding about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Thank you for your time.